Hi there, I'm Julie, and we're celebrating Griffith Park through crochet as part of the Autry Museum's exhibition, Investigating Griffith Park. Today I'm demonstrating how to crochet a red-tailed hawk, like this. The red-tailed hawk is the most common rafter seen in Griffith Park, and 60 nests were found in the 2019 Griffith Park Raptor Survey. If you'd like to crochet a red-tailed hawk, follow along with the video. You can pause and replay and reference the written pattern if you like. And once you've completed the hawk, please send it to us and we'll hang it up in the exhibition. We've provided information about where to send the crocheted pieces at the end of this video and on the website. To crochet a red-tailed hawk, you'll need yarn and a crochet hook. I used a 3.75 millimeter or F hook with DK weight brown, white, gray, peach, and yellow acrylic yarn. Please feel free to choose yarn colors as you would like. Please only use acrylic yarn, however, as it will help to prevent insects from getting into the gallery. You'll also need a tapestry needle and scissors. For the body, we're going to start with seven chains. So we'll make our slip knot and chain seven. For round one, we'll single crochet in the second chain from the hook. and single crochet in each of the next four chains. In the last chain, we're going to make four single crochets. Now we're on the other side of the chain and we'll work our way back. So we're going to do one single crochet in each of the next four chains. And in the last chain, which is actually the first chain from the other side, we'll do three single crochets. Since we already made one on the other side, we will slip stitch to that original single crochet from this round. And slip stitch. In round two, we're going to chain three, and this counts as a double crochet, and we're going to then double crochet in that same stitch, the first stitch of the round. Now we're going to double crochet in each of the next four stitches. For the next four stitches, we're going to place two double crochets in each of them. That's the first stitch, now the second one. Here's the third stitch. And 
the fourth stitch, which gets two double crochets. Now uh, we'll do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And we'll do two double crochets in each of the next three stitches. So that's the first one, second one, and third one. You'll see that this is your slip stitch from the last round. We're going to slip stitch in the third chain of that original chain three. Perhaps. Okay. So draw that yarn through and draw it through the loop. There, we finished round two. The next round is a bit more complex because of multiple color changes, although all these are optional, and because of a couple deviations from this basic oval form. So here we go for round three. With the white yarn that we've been using, we're going to make the right body first. So we'll slip stitch in the next four stitches. And single crochet in the next five stitches. On this fifth single crochet, we're changing colors to brown. So when you make a color change, you take the new yarn and draw it through in the last step of your stitch. Leaving a bit of a tail, I'm gonna keep that tight and then chain six. So we're using the brown to make the head here. And after we chain six, we double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. That's one, two, three, four. I like to uh, crochet in the back loop. So yarn over, go into that back loop and make your double crochet. Now two treble crochets in the next chain. So yarn over twice, go into that back loop and draw up another loop. So there's four loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, and yarn over, draw through two. I'm doing another one in the same stitch and then one in that last chain that we made with the brown yarn. Now it's come a little bit loose here where we changed color, so we just tighten that, and we're going to skip two stitches on the white body here, one, two, and we're going to slip stitch still with the brown yarn, to the next stitch. For the left body, I'm continuing to use the brown yarn. 
and I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches. And then slip stitch in the next five stitches. With this uh, fifth slip stitch, we're going to change the color of the yarn back to white. So you drop the white yarn and through the loop. Now we're going to chain two and we're starting on the tail feathers. So for the first three rows of the tail feathers, I'm using white yarn and then for the red part of the tail feathers, I'm changing to peach. So we double crochet in the same stitch as that chain. Treble crochet in the next stitch Now we're going to uh, treble crochet two stitches together, but placing the first one in the same place where we just had the treble crochet. So we start that treble and then yarn over twice again and go into the next stitch. Drop a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, and then yarn over, draw through three. And we're gonna do this again, where we treble crochet two together, but starting in the stitch where the last stitch is located. So yarn over twice, go into that stitch and draw up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, two loops left, yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, five loops on the hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, and then yarn over, draw through three. So now we're going to the next row. We're going to chain four, and turn. We're going to treble crochet in the first stitch And then we're going to treble crochet over the next two stitches, uh, two together. And again, in this case, we're going to treble crochet two together starting in the same stitch where the last stitch ended. And this last part of the stitch is in the top chain from the row before. Go into that top chain and complete your double troke uh, treble crochet two together. Okay. Now for the third row of the tail, we're going to start with the chain three. Now flip. And we're going to do a double crochet two together in this first and second stitch. So you yarn over and draw up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and draw through two. You have two loops left. Now you yarn over again, go into the next stitch. Draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, and you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and draw through all three loops. 
Now we're going to uh, double crochet in the last two stitches. The last stitch is actually a chain uh, four and you're going to place the stitch in the top chain of that chain four. Um, however, on this stitch, we are going to change the yarn color as well. So, as we're completing the double crochet, we need to move to the peach yarn. And when we have those last two loops on our hook, we're going to draw the peach yarn through. And we're going to chain three. Now we double crochet two together in the next two stitches. And one last double crochet in this top chain of the chain three from the last row. Is a little hard to get into but here we go and now we're going to fasten off so we cut the yarn and draw the end through the loop there we go and that's what we have so far for our hawk we still have a few more steps to go though. And we're, next step we're going to do is the beak. So now we're ready to make the beak. We're going to attach the yarn to the head. Just count up three stitches here. One, two, three. And you'll insert the hook and drop the yarn. Now let's make a chain stitch here and a single crochet in the same place. We're going to do one more single crochet in this top chain of the chain three that we did a long time ago in the head. I guess it's actually the bottom chain of the chain three in this case. And then uh, we're going to chain one and turn. So we have uh, two single crochets that we made. We're going to do a single crochet two together. So insert the hook and draw up a loop. And then in the next stitch, insert the hook and drop a loop, three loops, yarn over and draw through all three. We're going to chain one and with the scissors, we're going to cut the yarn and fasten off. What's nice is there's this natural kind of dip just like the hawk's beak. So that's kind of a nice automatic setup there for us, but we can position it a little bit better with our fingers and when we uh, sew in the end, it'll also help to shape it into the shape we'd like to see. So that's the beak and we'll move on to the wing next. So now we're going to work on the wing. The wing is worked separately and then attached afterwards. We'll be using brown yarn. We're going to start with a loose slip knot. So don't tighten it fully. Insert the hook into the loop and we'll chain four here.
and then we'll make two treble crochets right in this center ring. So don't forget for the treble crochet, you're going to yarn over twice, insert the hook, draw up a loop with four loops on the hook, and then yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, and make sure you had two of those treble crochets in addition to the chain four. Now you can tug on this yarn tail to shrink that initial center ring. And then we'll have a row of treble crochets where we chain four and turn yarn over twice, insert the hook into the first stitch, so the same place where the chain is placed, and then make your treble crochet, and then you'll have two more uh, trebles, one in each of the next two stitches. In this last stitch that you're making, uh, in which you're making a treble, stitch you want to um, know that you'll you'll be doing it in the top chain of the chain four so insert the hook through that top chain now for row three chain three and turn and let's make double crochets in each of the next three stitches. So yarn over once, just like you usually do for double crochet. And again, you're working in the top chain of a chain four for this last double crochet that you're making. takes a little more effort to get the hook through in through a chain stitch than it does into the other types of stitches. So here we go. Now we're going to have another row of treble crochets. So chain four and turn. This is row four and yarn over twice, working not in this first stitch this time, but just the second, third, and fourth. In the fourth stitch again working in the top chain of the chain three this time there we go and for the last row it's double crochets we'll chain three and turn and then we're going to do uh, double crochet three together. So we yarn over and insert the hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through two. Now you'll yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, insert the hook into this Last stitch, which is a chain four, so the top chain of the chain four, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all four loops. Now we're going to fasten off, leaving a nice long tail for sewing, and draw the end through the loop. There's your wing. And 
and now we'll work on sewing it to the body of the hawk. Placement of this wing is important um, to make it surely look like a powerful wing and that it's, uh, and so it looks like a hawk as well. Um, I like to leave a little space between the head and the wing to show that the part above the wing, I don't know if they're called the shoulder or what, but um, to show that, you know, that's incredibly powerful. This is a powerful bird. And then we'll need a needle. Now we'll work on the claw. I'm using tan yarn so it'll be easier to see. Start with a slip knot, making sure there's a long enough tail so we can use it to attach to the hawk at the end. And we'll chain six. Now skipping the first three chains, we'll make a double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. Make another uh, two double crochets, one in each of the next chains. We've exhausted our chains. Great. Now we're going to chain three and turn. We're going to make a double crochet three together over the next three stitches. So yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two, two loops. Yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch and draw up a loop yarn over and draw through two loops. Yarn over, insert the hook into the top chain of the chain three, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two loops, and you'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all four loops, except we're going to need to change colors here, if, if you want, to make the claw. So instead of drawing the same yarn through, you can cut it and add your new yarn. I'm going to use yellow. So draw that yarn through and tug on both yarns at the connection to make sure they're as tight as you can get them. And then we'll chain Eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to skip the first chain and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. And we're also going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. Now we're going to chain five. Here we're going to slip stitch into the second uh, chain from the hook right there. We're going to single crochet and slip stitch into that next chain stitch. And slip stitch into the next two chain stitches. We're 
going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we'll cut the yarn and fasten off. Now we're going to sew all the pieces together. We'll start by sewing on this wing going to do some very simple sewing. Insert the yarn into the eye of the needle by folding it in half and then pulling it through. And then you're just going to go over and under, over and under, like the most basic sewing you can do. And go through the yarn. So it is discreet as, as discreet as possible. Once you've done that a few times, you can go back and forth. You'll want to weave in the end. So to weave in the end, we're going to go under a few strands, at least three or four, in one direction like that. And then we're going to go in the other direction. I'm going to thread that needle once it's in, because my tail's a little short. And then you'll do it one last time to lock it in place. And finally, you'll cut the end off. So I like the way that wing was placed. Now let's see what would look good for this leg and claw. See, we want to make him look like a predatory bird, of course, so it seems like if he tilts a little more, he looks a little bit more ready to looking for his prey. <laughs> so let's place him about there. Thread our needle. The same thing as before. We go over, under, just sewing it in at the top here. You can sew it in a little bit more just to make sure it's stable. Oops. And then we're just going to sew in the end. Go under a bunch of strands of yarn here, all in a row. Pull it through. And do the same going the other way. And one more time, skipping just the very first strand there to make sure that it locks in place.
There he is, and all we have left to do is add an eye. The final step is adding an eye. You can embroider one on using a French knot. There are numerous videos available on YouTube to learn how to make French knots. You could also cut one out of felt. A hawk's yellow and black eyes could be color specific this way. You can also use a button or safety eye, and I have a safety eye right here. Whichever way you choose to represent the hawk's eye, placement is an important part. I like to place the eye halfway down the beak on the left-hand side of the beak. For using a safety eye, make sure to secure the back on. But there you have your red-tailed hawk. Thanks for watching. Hope you were able to give the hawk a try. And please check out the information at the end of the video to find out where you need to send the piece to have it included in the exhibition. Thank you. Goodbye.